Pawn Stars is a very interesting show when you think about it, because it's honestly a show about grown men running a pawn shop trying to do all they can to get both interesting items and items that can make them a lot of money. Plus, since it's a family, plus Chum Lee, it adds an extra dynamic that has kept it on for over 11 years. But if you look at the true history of the shop, you'll find yourself looking at some bad beats and bad breaks that don't paint the Pawn Stars in the best of light. Allow us to show you them. But first, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Do you want to win a brand new iPhone or a brand new MacBook Pro? Maybe you'd prefer a $500 Amazon gift card. Well, comment the hidden message in this video for a chance to enter to win. Number 8. Chumley's Legal Troubles Let's start out with arguably the worst of the bunch, shall we? We say that because of the nature of the crime and all that had happened to make it lesser. As anyone who's watched Pawn Stars will tell you, Chumley is something of a character. He's a bit of a joke to the other main cast members, but he does good work for the most part. He has made smart decisions and big deals despite the constant mocking from Rick Harrison. That being said, Chumley got into some serious trouble when his home was raided as Las Vegas police officers served a warrant in relation to a case. No matter what way you look at it, that's not good. While searching his home, they found several illegal substances as well as an unlicensed firearm. The illegal substances was one thing, but having a gun that isn't registered to you, they take that kind of thing very seriously especially in Las Vegas. He was charged with at least one misdemeanor and a felony, but pled down the charges to attempted possession of a controlled substance. He was able to avoid jail time in lieu of probation and counseling, which if we're being honest here is a really big break that you have to wonder if something happened behind the scenes to make that happen. The news of Chumley's arrest made the headlines, but it's not something anyone was going to bring up on the show. His work on the series wasn't interrupted, so it didn't make history's airwaves in any fashion, which is very telling when you think about it. Without Chum Lee, Pawn Stars just isn't the same in the eyes of the channel. But just as important as this is the fact that this incident really caused a lot of stress on set. Chum Lee already wasn't popular with Rick Harrison, and this pushed that into even deeper levels of dislike. Yet because History Channel felt no need to intervene as he didn't actually go to jail, Rick got stuck with him which again is a very telling kind of thing. There's a difference between antics on TV shows and antics in real life. If Chum Lee keeps making these kinds of mistakes, he's going to pay for it in more than just fines and counseling. Not to mention that he hasn't exactly done himself any favors in the eyes of the Harrisons. It's known that without the History Channel, Chum Lee would have gotten fired a lot sooner because of his antics. But because he makes the money, they're willing to look the other way, which shows the priority of the channel in the worst way. But we'll be fair to Chum Lee, he has been relatively good since this incident. And he's not the only pawn star with a certain history with the law. Number 7. Corey Harrison's Bar Fight In March 2011, Corey Harrison was placed behind bars on suspicion of battery with a serious bodily injury and resisting the law, which is pretty bad and not something you'd expect from a Harrison. The police were initially flagged down by a security guard at a bar after Corey had gotten into a verbal dispute with another patron. However, once law enforcement arrived on scene and spoke to both Harrison and the other guy involved, Corey pushed one of the security guards and slightly pushed an officer. Harrison was then arrested and held in custody for several hours until he was sober enough to leave. Yeah, did we mention he was basically drunk? Not a good look there. Harrison's lawyers reportedly stated that the police wanted Harrison to apologize for the verbal spat, but Corey refused as he felt he had done nothing wrong and maintains that he did not get physical with anyone, which is an odd stance to take considering that there were multiple witnesses to this account. Plus, he had to be arrested for something, right? In what we can only assume is an attempt to avoid any future situations like this, Corey has since purchased his very own bar instead. What this shows off in quite a sad fashion is that while the guys of Pawn Stars are quite the characters in front of the camera, they're still human beings, and ones who are quite capable of getting into trouble, proving that often proven adage, that how you are in front of the camera is your best version compared to what you are behind it. Now sure, Corey wasn't arrested for too long, but it's something that people find out about and thus paint a very different picture of the guys when things like this happen. Add to that, people like the Pawn Stars because they think they're stand-up guys, but this kind of shows otherwise. As if that wasn't bad enough, this wasn't the only time he's gotten in trouble with the law. The other time was much weirder. Number 6 the public urination charge. In 2014, Corey Harrison and a group of friends took a sponsored motorcycle cruise through Missouri before ending up in the Spectator's Bar in Jefferson City. Naturally, Harrison and his crew got super messed up during this trip. However, Harrison's inebriated state led to some bad decisions and one very awkward photo op. At one point during the evening, Harrison pulled down his pants and began to reveal himself publicly. He relieved himself in front of everyone right in the middle of the bar. Harrison wasn't embarrassed by his actions. However, he took the opportunity to pose for a photo sans pants. A few weeks after the incident, Harrison did finally realize the error of his ways and made a public apology for the ill-advised act. And once again, it paints a certain picture for how the Pawn Stars act outside of the show and their shop. Corey clearly has problems with drinking and doing bad things once he's under the influence. If that doesn't change, bad things will continue to happen to him. There hasn't been a known incident involving his drinking habit since 2014, so perhaps he's turned things around, but we can't say for sure. Number 5. Littering Alright, this one may seem petty, but it's honestly kind of funny to talk about. Both Rick and Corey were fined in California after littering on a campground. 
TMZ reported that the Harrisons were camping in Glamis, California over the weekend of Thanksgiving when they left behind trash bags full of garbage. They were with friends, and the garbage included cans, garbage, and a barbecue grill, and the trash was enough to fill up 10 trash bags, which means they had quite the camping outing. Rick and Corey were each fined $1,000 according to Corey Harrison. However, said to TMZ, we left the campground before our buddies did, and they were to clean it up and apparently didn't follow through. My father nor I were cited. That may be true, but you were still a part of the act. Plus, it's just your word that this was supposed to be a group effort to clean up and not litter. So yeah, who knows what really happened on that campground. Number 4. Rick and the Diamonds You might think that all of their dark antics happen outside of the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop, but in fact, many happen inside of it whether they want to acknowledge it or not. Rick Harrison talked about one time he was scammed in a stolen item situation that cost the shop big. A man in a sharp suit walked into the pawn shop looking to sell a bunch of what appeared to be valuable diamonds. Harrison stated that he asked the seller all the right questions, including the date, how he got them, etc. This this is standard procedure to ensure that they're not buying stolen items from someone who ripped off another person. The seller gave all the right answers, even showing receipts and proof of purchase, which usually would indicate a good deal, but as you can guess, it wasn't that way at all. Just a few days after buying the diamonds for over $40,000, the police showed up. The police had gotten a report that the jewelry was stolen by the seller. The police confiscated the diamonds, and the girl who originally owned them got all of her belongings back. This left the Pawn Stars in debt after the large purchase, and it was a time that Rick Harrison would rather forget. Rick says that this was the biggest bust he's ever had in the pawn shop, because unlike items that he's bought for the shop and they flopped, he put a lot of money into this deal, and yet got zero dollars in return, because he wasn't going to get his money back. So yeah, not the best day for the Pawn Stars, and sadly, this wouldn't be the only stolen items they deal with. Number 3. Shekel of Tire One of the most famous occasions of the Pawn Stars dealing with stolen goods is when a man named Ryan came in with a Shekel of Tire, which is a silver coin that was given out in Lebanon back from 130 BC to 79 AD. But what is the most interesting about this coin, or so the seller said, was that this might have been one of the infamous 30 pieces of silver that was paid to Judas Iscariot to betray Jesus Christ of the Nazareth in the Bible, which obviously would make it infinitely valuable, though it couldn't be proven, obviously. The deal was too good to pass up, so they bought it. Not long after, a sheriff showed up and revealed that the coin had been stolen before it was sold to them. Not by Ryan, but by someone else. Thankfully for the team, they weren't held accountable, and they were actually allowed to keep the coin due to the insurance payouts. But if you thought the Pawn Stars were totally free and clear, not quite. Rick Harrison liked the coin and paid $1,600 for it, but at best, a typical shekel of tire would only be worth around $1,200 if it was kept in its original state. Ryan had cleaned the coin and thus devalued it, making the loss more than $400. So they not only paid more than they should have, they did it with a stolen coin. Would this be biblical karma? Number 2. Chumley in the Back this one isn't a legal matter per se, but it is a time where Pawn Star's actions cost the store dearly. And yes, before you ask, it was Chum Lee's fault. In a place like the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop, the most important thing is to make sure that all the items in the shop are maintained and properly taken care of. For the Pawn Stars, you'll see a lot of great items up front to lure you in, but very special and pricey items are kept in the back. And one of the biggest things is to make sure to treat the items carefully in the back. Chumley does not care about this rule at all, which has led to many bad things happening. In short, Chumley will go into the back storage area and play with these items, and at times, he breaks them, and then plays dumb as to how the items got broken. But the Harrisons are no fools when it comes to Chumley's antics. They caught him on camera horsing around with random items. One time, he was in charge of a guitar that was valued at $20,000. He put it up against the stand in the storage room, and then it fell shattered and was completely unrepairable. The customer in question came back for the item and the team had to pay out of pocket $20,000 for the screw up. Without a doubt, there are more cases of this happening in the back, mainly because Chumley just isn't that trustworthy at times. The only reason Rick Harrison keeps him around is because of History Channel knowing his value. But even they have been pushed to the limit at times, though obviously not enough to fire him. And think about this from the customer perspective. They come to the Pawn Stars because they're supposed to be trustworthy, and yet here they are breaking their items or horsing around with them when they're supposed to be kept safe and pristine. Should this happen with the wrong item and customer, a lawsuit could totally be filed against them. Speaking of which, number one, the gold coins case. Oh yeah, you knew this was coming, Pawn Stars fans, because in terms of shady deals and tactics, this one has to top the list. So how did this all happen? It began with Jennifer Beckman, who came into the gold and silver pawn shop while the show was filming, meaning she made it to air, and offered to sell some really beautiful gold coins. Seems like a fair and basic deal, right? They paid over $10,000 for the coins. She got her money, and everyone was happy except for her uncle, whom she had stolen the gold coins from. What's more, they weren't worth over 10 grand. They were worth over 50 grand. Naturally, after finding out what his niece had done, he called the police. She was arrested, and he went to the Pawn Stars to get his coins back. 
problem. The coins were gone. They had melted them to go and get the best value for the coins themselves. Now usually there is a law that prevents this, but gold coins are exempt from this law. Plus the Pawn Star state that his claims of them being worth over 50 grand was exaggerated. The man tried to sue, but the Pawn Stars were protected via the law. So the man lost a lot and the Pawn Stars got serious egg on their face. And there you have it everyone, a look at the Pawn Stars and some of the shady deals that they have done by the counter and behind the cameras of the show. Can you believe some of the things that have happened to the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop over the years? Which of these events do you remember hearing about or being shocked by? Do you think that any of these events will happen again for the Pawn Stars? Let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the channel.